good, all good. Okay, okay, so it looks like we are good. And it's first, it's been a while since I've done this, so a few, few technical issues to start with, but let's get cracking. So what we're gonna be talking about today is the five pillars of high performance kite surfing. So how you can improve your kite surfing literally when you are off the water by using these simple principles. And that's generally what we do on this channel, full stop. So if it's something that you're interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, click the bell to make sure you receive notifications. You know, I'm gonna be doing a lot of live videos talking about this, how you can improve your kite surfing literally when you are off the water. So let's get cracking. As I say, today we are talking about the five pillars of peak performance kite surfing, of high performance kite surfing. And this is basically going into the, the fundamentals behind these, behind the idea of peak performance. Now, again, we talk about kite surfing, but these, these apply equally over all walks of life. You know, it's, it's quite obvious that it's not just going to be talking about kite surfing here. Um, but I want you to, to start, let's just rearrange this so we're looking good. I want you to, to, the way we want to start this is imagine you have got a battery in your chest, you know, just about here in your chest. Now for me, peak performance is all about energy. It's as simple as that. The more energy you've got, the more force you've got to be able to do the things you love, the more energy your body has got to distribute to the, the right systems, the critical systems it needs to perform at a higher level. So all we're going to be talking about for the moment is energy. It keeps things really, really simple. So, again, imagine you have a battery in the middle of your chest. Now, obviously, the, the bigger that battery is, the more charge it can hold, the higher quality of charge that battery has, and the faster it can recharge, the better off you're going to be in life. Now, the body is a really, really clever system. And what it does is it prioritizes this energy in a kind of triage-like system. So it says, okay, we've got the battery so far, we've got this much energy to play with. Where are we going to divert that energy? Which systems are most important? Now, this is important. This is important for, for kite surfing and for just life in general because the systems that the body prioritizes aren't necessarily what we would class as the fun systems. The systems the body prioritizes are the ones which keep us alive from day to day, the things that happen unconsciously beneath the hood without us ever even knowing about it. So systems like your limbic system, i.e. the reptile part of your brain, this is hugely important. Why? Because this is the part of your brain that's constantly scanning for threats. It's the part of your brain that when you touch a hot plate, or a hot stove or something like that, it's that reflex reaction that you've got no control over that just poof, pings back. The other systems it looks after, things like the, you know, your heart beating, the fact that your lungs are taking in air, not very sexy stuff. I mean, super essential, obviously, but not very sexy. So that's the first kind of systems it takes place. Now, ideally, when you've got 100% energy all the time, it, it diverts energy all over the place. You've got en enough energy to turn on every single system and you feel awesome. However, for most people, that's not the case. So what it starts to do is, okay, well, which systems aren't as essential? And this is where it becomes really important for us as kite surfers. Which systems aren't as essential and are very energy hungry? Well, there's one which is immensely energy hungry. The most energy hungry system that you have is your prefrontal cortex. It's this part of the brain I'd like to call the human brain. It's this part that's responsible for higher reasoning, for advanced learning, um, for, for higher emotions as well, for the higher emotions, for feeling better on a daily, for being able to think your way through, process through, Focus, you know, being able to concentrate again, super important on the water. How many people get on the water and within half an hour they've just lost that focus? They start tripping rails, they start doing stupid mistakes that they wouldn't have been doing earlier. And it's because of that prefrontal cortex. As what happens is as soon as your body starts to suffer from energy, it says, Look, this prefrontal cortex is great, it's really nice to have, but it's absolutely not essential for survival. It's not important that I can focus on this task for eight hours. It's not important that I can philosophize on the meaning of life. It's not important that I can, can extrapolate past information from future, uh, past 
for future consequence from past information. It's just not that important in a survival sense of the, of the word. And it costs me a huge amount of energy because it's massively energy hungry. So what your prefrontal cortex does, so what your, your body does, it goes, okay, cool, we're down to 80% battery. We've only got 80% battery left. So what we'll do is we'll just shut down that prefrontal cortex. Boom. Suddenly you're on the water. Oh, I've just got, I can't think properly. You know, this trick that I was trying 10 minutes ago, I just, I just can't even visualize it anymore. My brain is just not working. I'm certainly not learning anything. And my focus has entirely gone. You know, my brain's all over the place. It's wandering off. It's, it's doing all these different things that I don't really want it to do because your prefrontal cortex has just shut down because you've, your, your battery levels are dropping. Another system that's hugely enjoyable for us, um, but not very, not very important in this sense, is the reproductive system. You know, the reproductive system is massively useful for us. You know, testosterone, all these feel-good hormones, all the benefits of testosterone, increased libido, which is nice, you know, for all of us. But again, if you've not got enough energy, your body says, well, look, actually, we don't want to be making babies at this point anyway, because you've barely got enough energy to look after your own energy needs. So what we'll do is we'll just chop that off for the moment. We'll stop building that. We'll stop doing anything towards that and re-divert that energy to these critical systems that are now under threat because we are losing more and more energy. So it turns off your reproductive system. So loss, this is why libido is such a great indicator of health, of performance. Because if you've got no libido, it's likely that your, your prefrontal cortex isn't working because that's the first thing that goes. And secondly, you know, the second, one of the second things goes, your reproductive system, your body just stops doing it. You know, we tend to think that you hit 25 and your libido just goes. I mean, I work with people who they hit, you know, they start working with me at 50 and they say, oh my God, you know, my partner needs to buy you a beer. <laughs> because suddenly I'm horny all the goddamn time. And that's a great sign because that's a sign that, look, there's energy to burn, there's energy to spare above and beyond the critical system so you can start powering this reproductive system. Now, why is that important for kite surfers? Well, because... You know, testosterone, this, let's take one example, is hugely important hormone for men and women when it comes to recovery, you know, muscle building, muscle recovery, the ability to perform at a consistent level over time, hugely, hugely important. So, so what we need to be very, very careful of is that we don't let these, this energy level drop to a point where our, our non-critical but very, very useful for our performance systems i.e prefrontal cortex you know sexual function muscle function things like that we never let our energy brown out to a point where that isn't useful where that cannot happen so that's what we're going to talk about today is literally how to how to keep this battery charged how to improve the charge in the battery so it's got a better quality of charge how to uh, recharge the battery faster and how to increase the size of the battery, okay? Why? With the idea that when you hit the water, or when you do anything, you know, you can do it at 150%. So you are, boom, you are in there, you are absolutely rocking everything that you do because all your systems are working all the time. As we go through, if you've got any questions, bang them in the chat. I might not get to them immediately because it will, it will might interrupt my flow, um, but I will get to them kind of at, at, a, at a convenient point. If you've got any questions, this is interactive, so bang it in the chat. This is the great thing about these live videos. Ask away, um, and we'll go through it from there. So, first one. So we've talked about the importance of the battery and why energy is everything when it comes to kite surfing or whether it comes to, to life in general. The basis of life is energy. So the first thing that we've got to do the most important step, and this is kind of the first step where most people go wrong. Most people think, okay, well, the first thing we do is improve the charge in the battery, increase the size of the battery, you know, make sure my battery's working 100%. That's where I'm going to start. No. The place that we need to start is identify what is already draining the battery. Because if we can eliminate them, you know, then straight off, your battery's going to stay charged for longer. So this is the first place we start, and this is the kind of this, this place where most people I see in, in whatever field you look at with this, whether it's personal trainers, biohackers, you know, nutritionalists, whatever, this is where they go wrong. They start looking, or performance coaches indeed, like myself, they start looking at what can we add on? How can we make this better? Was really what you should be doing is looking, how can we stop? How can we, st how can we put a hole in the bucket? Now, how can we, not put a hole, how can we plug the hole in the bucket and stop the charge draining out of the bucket in the first place? So the first thing we need to do is identify what, what's causing the battery to drain. 
Okay, good question. Well, I mean, these are the obvious ones. Going kite surfing, you know, takes a lot of energy. There's these obvious ones, you know, running around at work, doing all these things, you know, these tasks at work, focusing for hours a day. These things cost energy, but there's, we can't stop them and we don't want to stop them. You know, these are the things that we want the energy for. So what are the things that are draining the energy unconsciously that if we got rid of, we'd just have a lot more energy to do the things we want to do? Because what you've got to think is everything that, that, that sucks energy out that you're not really aware of is less energy that you've got to go kite surfing to go and pull that next trip, to go and, you know, kite surf for four hours and then get up and do it again the next day. So if we can eliminate these little drains, that's a huge, huge step forward and often it's a lot less effort than changing other things up as well. So what you have to realise is that I call these the stressors, okay? Now, stress isn't necessarily the best word in a sense, but what I'm talking about by stressors is anything that affects your body that causes you to expend energy that you don't necessarily want to expend. Okay, so let's give you a simple example. Toxins in food. Okay, you're eating a high toxic diet. And we all eat a more, more of a toxic diet than we should do because food just contains more toxins these days. But what happens? You take in toxins, your body has to deal with them. It cannot have toxins bouncing around the system causing havoc in all sorts of places because it will damage a lot of these essential systems. Now, your liver is designed to neutralise and eliminate toxins. That's what it does. That's its job. You know, the blood takes these toxins, amongst other things. The blood takes the, the toxins to the liver, delivers them there. The liver, okay, cool, we can deal with that. Changes them, neutralises them into chemicals that can be expelled from the body um, nice and calmly. However, that takes energy. You know, this, this conversion of toxins into a harmless form takes energy. Energy which could be used for kite surfing. So if you're spending all your energy cleaning up toxin from the system, that's less energy you've got to do the things you want to do. So if we can change the, eliminate these toxins in the first place, instantly more energy in the battery because it's not been drained by this useless function. Well, not useless function, but function which you could have avoided, which is no fun. You know, cleaning toxins out of your system is no fun. It's, it's boring as hell. You don't even know it's happening, but it's draining energy away from your prefrontal cortex, from your libido, from things like that. Another, another really easy example, which no one thinks about, light. You know, we are designed as human beings to operate in sunlight. Sunlight comes at a very specific wavelength and frequency. Most of us these days sit under office lights and stare at a computer screen all day which aren't at the same frequency as natural light, you know, the wavelength or frequency. Now, what this does, it means that your brain has to work harder to interpret those signals coming in through your eyes. It has to work harder to actually change them into something that you can use. Again, energy which could have been used on the water. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather spend my energy on the water than trying to translate signals from crappy light that means that, that that's draining energy out of my system. So you can see, the, when I talk about stress, I'm not just talking about your boss shouting at you. There's all these little stresses that we don't know about. Another great example of a tiny stressor, soaps we use, the soaps, deodorants, things like this. A lot of them are full of parabens, aluminiums, things like this, which our body doesn't react well to. And so you're going to like, go to the gym and then coming back and washing yourself in this oil-filled soap, paraben-filled soap, spraying yourself with deodorant, which is full of aluminium. Your body's having to work harder to clear those toxins, those plastics, those estrogen mimics out of the system. Again, that's energy that you're, you could have been spending elsewhere, energy that's draining out of your battery with very little benefit to you. You might smell nice, but there's ways to smell nice without using toxic stuff. Um, and if you could just eliminate that, it's a very simple lifestyle change to fix, but change that and suddenly, wow, I've got more energy, you know? I've got more battery to go kite surfing. We talked about your boss shouting at you. That is a, that is a stressor, you know? That forces you into, you know, have an argument with your spouse, have an argument with your boss, whatever, get cut up in traffic. Now, this is the more normal stress that we know. This is when I talk about stress, this is the more natural form that we talk about, this idea of, um, of a stress, you know, an external stress, financial stresses, existential stresses, things like this, relationship stress, that puts your body in fight or flight, which is a stressor. You know, that's like battle systems. That's your, that's, I mean, I'm a geek. That's Starship Enterprise, you know, all power to phasers, divert energy to shields, let's go. And your body ups its game. It expends energy. So what we want to do, again, is maintain the system 
in this much more stress free what I call the green zone, this feed and breed zone, because that takes a lot less energy. And it, while we're doing that, we're actually recharging the battery. You know, the green is a recharge state. Red is a, is a, let's use the energy because we need to get out of here now. So again, your boss shouting at you is another form of stress. We've got all these different forms of stress, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about these that are affecting us in modern life, all of which are not taking, you know, none, none on their own are probably taking a huge amount out of the battery. But combined, it probably means that before you even start the day, your battery's at 50%. You know, so you, your prefrontal cortex is off, your, your, your hormone systems are shutting down, your reproductive systems are turning down bugger this, we haven't got energy for this, we need to just concentrate on getting through the day, you know. Um, so your body is, is in this state where it's already draining from the battery. And imagine you could get rid of them. Now, not all of them, we can't get rid of all of them. You wouldn't want to get rid of all of them for reasons we'll talk about later. But if you manage to get rid of most of them, suddenly rather than your body just being at 50% energy before you start the day, it's at 80% energy. Wow! And now suddenly, you know, without, with very few changes in my lifestyle, suddenly I've got much more energy. You know, now my libido's firing. Now I want to have sex with everything, you know. Which maybe isn't a good thing, depending on where you want. But you get my meaning, you know. Uh, now my prefrontal cortex is starting to work. I'm starting to feel this focus. I'm starting to feel this ability to learn again. My brain's switching on. And it literally is, you know, when you get this, it's like, oh my God. There's another level of life here. where My brain suddenly works when you're on the water. You know, rather than after half an hour you find your tripping rails and your concentration's gone, you can still got laser focus after, after two, three hours because your brain's, wow, we've got energy to burn here, we're fine. And you've got energy to power your body just because you've eliminated those things which are causing drain on the system. Okay, so that's the first point there. So, Masha, here we go. Very interesting point about addressing what's draining you. I switched to learning to music instead of podcasts on my way to my spot. It's two hours drive, so I don't use my focus as much. Yeah, great idea. You know, really, this is this is one of the, the issues I have with a lot of like the gurus out there are saying, you know, podcast, podcast, podcast. Yeah, you should be on a podcast all the time. No, no, I don't agree with that at all. Because as you've just said, you know, that takes, that's, if you, for a time, yeah, perfect. You know, we need to be, be upgrading our brains, obviously. But too much of it. You know, great example. Einstein used to dedicate 20 minutes a day to go and lie on, the, lie on his back in a boat and stare at clouds. And that's when his ideas came to him. Why? Because at that time, he's switching off. You know, he was letting the battery recharge. And if you're constantly on go, as we've kind of been, been um, told to in this day and age, you know, there's actually a brainwave state. You know, you will switch to what's called beta brainwaves if you're in this listening to podcasts. It's that brain where your brain's thinking, it's planning, it's reasoning, and it costs energy. You know, it's very, very energy um, hungry state. Whereas alpha, which is kind of what you do when you're listening to music, you know, that premeditative state where you're just daydreaming basically, that's restorative, that's rebuilding, that's recharging the brain. So yeah, great, great point there, Mash. You know, it's a huge, makes a huge difference. Now again, where's the balance? And this is kind of the key with all this, as you'll see as we go through this talk today. That this is the key is the getting the balance between where's too much, you know? Because listening to music all the time and never listening to podcasts, you'd never learn anything. But listening to podcasts all the time and never reflecting, you would never actually take that information in to a usable form. So it's getting the balance right between it. And we talk about how to do that later on. So let's get to that. Oh, and by the way, if you want to, we have put together a download where you can basically have condensed the kind of the, the greatest parts of this talk into a smaller PDF that you can download. The link is in the show notes in the description just below this. It's learn, learning the secrets to ripping harder, jumping higher, and learning faster. Um, we put together, you go there, put your email in, sign up, you'll get this the PDF delivered to your inbox, which basically breaks down the main, main point that we talk about here that I kind of come to, that I get to, and breaks it down in the PDF. So if you're interested in going to get that, again, links in the show notes below or somewhere around the video, depending on where you're watching this, um, go, and, go and grab that. And then come back, obviously. So what we're going to talk about now, okay, so we've talked about, first, first step is you have to eliminate the stresses, eliminate the things that are draining the battery, plug the holes in the bucket, basically, because that's, that makes your life easier. Once you've done that, then we can build on that. If you just try and build on a leaky battery, you, you know, you're constantly fighting an uphill battle. You're never going to get there. So once we've, once we've plugged those holes, 
the first thing we want to look at is okay how can we improve the charge in the battery so we're not going to increase the size of the battery all we're going to do is change that charge so it's more effective it's more powerful so we make more use of what we've got the single best way of doing this is fuel fuel super simple you know the Diet, what you're eating, can either be the greatest stressor and the greatest drainer on your battery, or it can be the thing which increases that charge so much that you never, ever get a brownout. Now, let me explain why. Again, if you're eating, we've already talked about one example of this, but if you're eating a high-toxin diet, you know, we've seen that takes energy away. If you're eating a low-toxin, high-nutrient diet, that will be increasing the charge in the batteries this is why so many peak performance programs start with diet why because it's such a powerful intervention because it has the possibility of going either way you know on a really really simple level digestion is a very very energy intensive um, reaction so if you're di if you're spending your time digesting crappy food with very few nutrients and a lot of toxins in you're wasting energy Whereas if you're using that same energy to digest food which is full of nutrients, packed full of energy and very few toxins, you know, that's instantly a massive boost in charge for your battery. So this is why diet is so important in this. And it's, you know, everyone hates people banging on about diet because we've been, we've been hit by so many different angles these days. You've got to eat this, you've got to eat that. If you eat that, you'll die, la, la, la. I get it. You know, I see people rolling their eyes as soon as you start talking about it. But it's just so important. And it's so easy to get wrong because there's so much bad advice out there. So what's the simple things we can do about that? You know, I'll try and give you a few usable points on this. And obviously this is, a, this is somewhere where we could talk for the next three days about diet. But on some very, very simple levels. And again, I've got a download for this. I don't think I've put it in the notes. But there is a download where we talk about kind of nu optimal nutrition for kite surfers. And what I'll do is I will go back in and put that in the, the notes after this video. So if you're watching this on the replay, that will be in the description as well down there. Um, Optimum Nutrition for Kite Surfers and the links there. Just click that again, you'll be taken over to, to this kind of broken down into a much more manageable form. But key points, swap out low nutrient carbs for high nutrient fats. Now I'm not saying you have to go ketogenic, I'm not saying you have to go bulletproof, I'm not saying you have to do any of these things, I'm not saying you have to put butter in your coffee though, I would taste delicious. Um, but just by simply reducing the amount of carbs you eat on a daily basis and replacing it with fats, most people, not everyone because we're not all the same, and this is the key thing to realize, we're not all the same, so what works for me almost certainly will not work for you, but there are some general principles that I've seen that tend to work across the board for most people. Now, we're all biochemically different. So this is why one person can say, look, be vegan. It's the best diet in the world. It worked for me. It was amazing. While the next person says, I tried that and it nearly killed me. And they're saying, I'm a full-time carnivore. Other people, wow, I tried that and it nearly killed me. You know, Again, because we're biochemically different. So there is no one human diet. That's the first thing. But there are a kind of template rules that we can apply to most people. And one of them is simply is cut out, cut out crappy, low-value carbs and add in high-value fats. Doesn't mean cut out all carbs, but things you know, things that carbs that have not many nutrients in them that are going to spike our blood sugar massively because that's another problem down the line. Um, that generally have a lot of anti nutrients in them, so try and cut them out. So we talk about cereals, pastas, breads, things like that. Replace them with high quality carbs: yuca, plantain, sweet potato, um, squash, things like that. They're going to be much more higher. So that's the first one. The second, which is really really simple, is eat real food. It's got more than one ingredient in it. It's not food. You know, an egg is an egg. Broccoli is broccoli. There's no other ingredients. You know, when you look, when you go to the supermarket and you read these tens of thousands of, of ingredients that are food, that's not food. Most of them are derived from crude oil, in fact. You know, most of them are refined crude oil. So you're actually eating crude oil. Crude oil and plastics, which is basically the same thing because plastics are derived from crude oil. So it's, it's food for robots. It's not food for humans. So there's two, two really, really simple points there that we can look at. And as I say, if you want to go deeper into that, there's a link. I will link it in the replay on this. So if you're watching live, you know, click back in half an hour after we've finished, and it will be there then to our kind of kite surfers optimal nutrition guide, which goes into this in a lot more detail. Obviously, I'm limited for time this morning. And this is a, this is a minefield of a subject because I say, and this is where most nutritionists kind of go wrong is they fling their hat in with one diet. Right? I'm I'm going to teach keto. That's what I believe works. That's what worked for me. It must work for everyone. It doesn't work like that. 
it really doesn't work. You know, I can say you have to work with thousands of clients. It does not work. Like because that. that's how I started. You know, this is the best diet. This is going to work for everyone. And then you find, oh, I've nearly killed this person. Shit, what's going on there? And when you dig deeper, you know, often at a genetic level or an epigenetic level, you find there's something going on. That, well, that's why that diet just doesn't work for that person. So you need to adapt and adjust. Um, so that's the first principle, fuel. That will increase the charge in the battery. Now, the second thing we want to do is increase the battery's capacity. So increase the size of the battery. Now, obviously, this, you, know, you can see why this is important. Because if you've got a bigger battery with better charge, you've got much more, there's much more stress as you can take before you hit that point where systems start to shut down. So let's say you've got a battery that now works at 150% capacity, but it's 150% bigger with better charge, then suddenly you can go down to 80% before your prefrontal cortex starts to shut down. So you're much more resistant to all these different forms of stress. You've got energy to burn, literally, you've got energy to spare. So, how do we increase the battery size? Well, there, this is where it gets interesting because there are several stressors which what they do is they, while they initially take energy away from the battery, what they force the body to do is react and adapt to that stress and build the battery bigger. Now, the key, key point here is that initially they cause stress. Now, like any other stressor on the system, they cause you to drain the battery. But they then rebuild, force the body to rebuild the battery bigger. Exercise is a great example of this. You know, everyone knows about the adaption response. The reason you get fit, you go to the gym, you work out, you break your muscles down, you come back, you recover, you relax, you chill out, you let the muscles regrow and they regrow stronger. Now, it's the same idea with the battery. So what you're doing with that, you're exercising... You're building your muscle, you're building more capacity, more, more size, you're building the battery bigger. So exercise is a great example of this. But, and here's the kicker, if you exercise every single day for 10 hours a day, you will probably not feel that great after three months of doing it. Fasting is another great example. Now the benefits of fasting are numerous and huge. But, you don't eat for a month, you're probably going to die. You know, so the poison is in the dose in these stresses. And what I see most people, another example, cold water, cold water immersion, great performance benefit. But you're staying there too long, you get hypothermia, you die. So it's about getting the dose right of these things. And what I see most people do when they jump into a performance program, is they say, right, cool, well, these things are good for me. You know, fasting is good for me. In that case, I'm going to just fast all the time. Exercise is good for me. I'm going to do loads of exercise. Cold water is good for me. I'm going to spend the entire day in cold water. But what you have to remember, they drain the battery first. So if you've, you're at a point in your life where you don't have much charge in the first place, because you haven't been doing these things, or you've been you know, abusing your body for the last 20, 30 years, and you start throwing these things on top, and then, wow, I just feel whacked. I've got no energy, I feel worse. And in fact, because I'm not recovering properly, because I'm not letting that battery rebuild, I'm just getting worse and worse and worse. And now I'm taking energy away from my critical systems. So things are really starting to go wrong. So this is why you've got to be so careful with these. They're hugely powerful interventions, but done wrong, they can cause more harm than good. So we have to be really careful with them. So again, fasting, you know, it's not, if you came to me and you were absolutely wiped out, you know, I've you know, been working 20 hour days for six months, I'm totally destroyed, I've got no energy for everything, for anything, you would not start fasting. No way, why? Because we're taking more energy away from the battery. So the first thing we do is we plug the holes, right? Plug the holes first of all. And then we add in a great diet on top of it so you can increase the charge of the battery. And then when you've got enough charge in that battery, we can start to introduce things like fasting, things like exercise. And this is a huge one, you know. I get so many CEOs sort of, what well, I hate the word A-type characters because it, it kind of signifies that B-type is worse and it's not, it's just different. But these kind of hugely driven, massively successful people run their own company, la, 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 doing a triathlon on the side. I'm exhausted all this. I'm trying to be a dad. I'm trying to be a, a husband. I'm trying to be a great son. Uh, I'm trying to be a sportsman and all these other things that we have to feel like we have to do these days. And I'm just whacked out, I'm, I'm wasted, I'm exhausted all the time. Come on, stop exercising. Stop exercising for two months. What? No way, no way, that's my, that's my, that's my way out of all this. That's my de-stressor. Yeah, but it's piling more stress on the system. And those that do, those that do listen to me, a lot don't. I think, no way, bugger you, I'm going somewhere else. Fine, okay, no problem. Those that do often feel a lot better, always feel a lot better in two months. Because they're just giving their body that 
time to build up a charge and then we can introduce these things slowly again so this is the key with these ones you know this is where where i feel a lot of a lot of kind of performance gurus are going wrong they say oh you're jumping cold water well, yeah that's great if you're already at a certain level if you're below a certain level that's going to do a lot more harm than good so be very careful that one. but it's, it's it's the best way to it's the only way to increase the size of the battery we have to apply this stress these good stress if you like in in the right way in the right dose for the right for for you as you are at the moment to slowly increase the size of that battery over time and these can have huge huge impacts again over time you're not going to notice a difference straight away but over the course of months you will notice huge huge differences with these so there's three three really simple examples of that exercise um i forgot what we talked about that exercise fasting and cold water therapy really really simple one. so if you are feeling good you know great place to start cold water is a really easy one at the end of your shower just flick the shower to cold for 30 seconds at the end stand there i guarantee you first few times you'll hate it then you'll just feel awesome after all you actually it's amazing you get to a point where you step out of the shower and you just feel it like you feel like an inner furnace just switch on just wow i feel like you know some kind of x-man just burning up with, with with fire it's awesome it's a great feeling so that's a really easy place to start. But again, don't jump in there if you feel like your battery's suffering anyway because you're just taking more power. And we need to work on the other principles first. So these are kind of put in order of how we need to address them as well. Because the most important thing if you are doing this what I call sensible stress, which is this um, you know, fasting, exercise, things like this, what we need to make sure is that Let's say you were doing them, you know, you've reached the point where you think, yeah, cool, I'm good to do them, that's fine, I've got the energy that I need to actually make these work. Okay, cool, great. But as we said earlier, when you're actually doing them, so let's take exercise as a great example of this, because everyone kind of gets this. When you're doing exercise, when you're at the gym, pumping iron, running on the treadmill, whatever you're doing, you are actually breaking your body down. At that moment, your body is in red mode. It's saying, shit, what's going on here? We need to grab all the resources we can and pump it into the muscles, into the circulatory system, into the heart, into the lungs, so that we can get through this next 20 minutes, or however long it's going to be. So at that moment, you're actually doing yourself damage, because where does it get those resources from? Well, it gets them from what I call the green system. It goes and it says, okay, well, we, we need more fuel for the fire. So where do we find that fuel? Well, if there's no fuel in the system because you haven't eaten for a while, it goes and it strips other parts of the body. The gut lining being a prime example. Right, we'll take that, that stuff, we'll break it down into energy, we'll reuse that for energy for our systems. So if you're kite surfing you know, six, seven hours a day, then it's very likely that you are at some point, you know, you've used up your glucose supplies, you've used up your, your ketone supplies, and you start switching, like your body starts scavenging. Like where do we get this energy from? And it gets it from those systems we talked about earlier, those green systems. As well, we'll scavenge stuff from the stomach lining, we'll scavenge, we'll break the muscles down to fuel the damn things. And which is why marathon runners are really skinny, because they literally eat their own muscles to produce the energy they need to get to a marathon. Yeah, it makes them more efficient as well, but that's literally what's going on. They're eating their own muscles. Um, so what you've got to be careful of, what you've got to do is you've got to go to the gym and exercise, but then you have to recover. And this is where everyone goes wrong, you know, especially, especially as a couch surfer. It's windy seven days in a row. I'm going couch surfing every single day. Yeah, and great. For seven days, it's not going to do you any harm. But if you then combine that, right, I'm going to come off the water and I've just had seven days on the water, so now I'm going to go to the gym every day when there's no wind and do a class of CrossFit and then go back on the water when it's windy, well, what happens? Well, if you're very, very fit, you can deal with that. But for most of us, that leads to a point where you're just, you're just breaking your body down more and more and more and more. And I know most of you get this because you, know, you understand kind of exercise physiology. But what happens is that you get to a point where your body just won't recover from that. So you're saying, we haven't recovered fully from the last session. The muscles aren't recovered, so we've now got nothing in the tank. So we need to scavenge from the first minute we're on the water. So you're starting to really break down those green systems. So we need to integrate real, real recovery into this so that when we, we can kite surf every single day. We can, we can apply these sensible stresses every single day and recover at 100%, wake up the next day at 100% and be able to kite surf again. Go kite surfing and do what we want to do. Have the energy you know, to wake up with a battery that's 100% charged, step out on the water, bump, we're good to go again. 
And this is where most of us miss out. We just think, well, we'll just keep doing this. If I keep applying these stress, if I fast every day, if I do exercise every day, if I do cold water therapy every day, then surely my body's going to rebuild stronger. No, because you've got to give it the time and the resources to rebuild. Okay, so how do we do that? You know, most people, when they think about this thing, oh, cool, recovery day, great. I'll sit on the sofa and do sod all. You know, oh, I'm done. Thumb up, bum, watch, watch Netflix. No, 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 no. Worst thing you can do. You know, lack of movement is also a huge stressor. Not a beneficial stressor, it's a bad stressor. Literally, your, your body is designed to work through movement. You know, your, your lymphatic system, it drains energy, it drains toxin from the muscles through movement. The circulatory system works much better with, with movement. So it means that your, your whole body is designed to be moving because that provides the lubrication to move these fluids around the body and to get these things working. So if you just sit around all day, that system doesn't work and you don't recover. So what we need to do is something called active recovery. So you go, for, let's say you go, you know, you kite surf for six hours one day. Great, awesome, best day of my life. Well, the next day, wow, I'm beat, I'm broken, I'm tired. Okay, cool. It's not just a case of sitting around and watching Netflix all day. That won't really do you much good. In fact, it will do you some harm. So what we need to do is, first of all, break down the, the difference between movement and exercise. And exercise is something that I would class as something that you couldn't do for an extended period of time. You know, jogging at a decent pace, lifting weights, you know, doing chin-ups, that's exercise, because you couldn't do it for any period of time. Something like walking, very light swimming, yoga kind of stuff. Those things you can do. Cycling very lightly on flat, flattish terrain. You can do that, for, for, you know, not forever, but for a long, long period of time. So that's what I class as movement versus exercise. On these active recovery days, you want to be doing as much movement as possible. No exercise. So you let your body recover by this movement. You let the natural systems of the body recover. Now, again, for a lot of us sitting at desk, this is more difficult. You know, if you're sitting at a desk all day. But, you know, there's things you can do. You can get up every 50 minutes and do some press-ups. You know, 10 press-ups every 50 minutes, that won't crash over to exercise, but it gets those systems flowing again so that you can sit down 50 minutes, interrupt it again, and keep that active recovery going. Okay? So that's one way of doing it. You know, stretching is another great way. Yoga is a great way. But more, more, not so much for the stretching, but for the breath work. Because what does the breath work do? Well, breath is our... Our only way, really, to actively influence the central nervous system. So we can, through breath work, we can turn off that fight or flight response. And this is really what we're talking about with this, is that when you've been kite surfing for six hours on the water and you step off the water, your body is now in fight or flight because it thinks it's been chased by a tiger for six hours. It's like, wow, shit, we need to recover from that. It's deep in the red zone. It's deep in fight or flight. So anything we can do to pull it back in, which, which as we've said, is a destructive state. That's when your body is breaking itself down. So what we want to do is anything we can do to drop it back into green, which is this restorative feed and breathe state, is a good thing. And breath work will do that. So when people talk about yoga, you know, yoga initially was simply breath work. We've just added the stretching in on top of that as a kind of a fancy way of making it more interesting for people. So yoga is a great one, but more for the breath work because that puts us back in touch with our central nervous system, flicks the switch from fight or flight onto rest and digest. Okay, so these kind of forms of active recovery, and again, there's hundreds more we could go into. I'm not going to go into them all now, but there's hundreds more that we can go into, hundreds of ways of doing it that you can actively recover from a day on the water, which what it does, it means, okay, all these systems are now recharged. My battery is back at 100%. So the next time I hit the water, boom, I'm good to go. And once you get good at this, you, know, you can get off the water, start doing these active recovery things straight away and be ready for the next day, irrespective of how old you are. You know, I don't care if you're 80 years old, you can still do these things. You won't be doing it as, as well as a 20-year-old because your body's just simply not as efficient, but you can still do these things. Um, and to use these, these techniques to really, really supercharge that performance and supercharge the amount of time it takes you to recover. So rather than taking a week to recover, it takes a few well, probably more than a few hours, but you know, a few, literally, you know, half a day, 12 hours, 16 hours, I suppose it's a few hours. So yeah, we're talking that kind of thing. The other obvious one here is sleep. You know, sleep is, sleep is the time when you recover. Now, I'm not going to go into this because there are so many articles on the internet about how to get a better night's sleep. Um, we still don't know a huge amount about sleep, but we do know that this is the time when your body really takes these resources and allocates them and rebuilds and reconstructs your body. So if you can combine active recovery with a great night's sleep, then you can literally do the you know, kite surf every day 
for, you know, I'm not going to say six hours because not all of us can, but for a good long time at 100% and then recover like, like a beast and be ready to do it the next day. And again, it's something that no one's paying any attention to. Why? Because there's not a lot of money in it. You know, there's not a lot of money in me selling you a course on how to recover better because, because the exercise industry has, has told us that it's actually all about exercise. Exercise, exercise, exercise. You know, and I remember when I was in the Marines, you know, we were told, right, beast yourself, get on the assault course, run around like an hour, and then go and get shit-faced that night. That's what real men do. That's insane. It's insane. You know, it just doesn't work like that because all you've done is you've broken your body down and then you've put another huge stress on top of it with 10 pints of exercise and probably a few fights in the Marines as well. Um, you put a huge another stress in it, which means that the next day you come back and wow, I'm nowhere. I'm not even not not my, not only am I not recovered, I'm digging myself into a deeper hole than I was when I just did the exercise. So my body now needs longer to recover from that. So you can see it's and this isn't the like to say to people, look, it's 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 not about what you do on the water. Now, you might spend an hour or two or three a day on the water if you're very lucky, you know. But you spend 20, 21, 22 hours rest of the day and it's what you do in those hours that's important if only because that helps you to recover more for the next session fully incorporate the gains and means that when you do rock up at the next session when it's windy again you are your battery is 100 percent charged you are ready to go and you can give it your absolute all again so this is why for me recovery is actually where it's at this is the most important part of this whole cycle but the final pillar that we want to talk about today, and I'm, I'm wrapping up here, so, so don't worry about it. We're finishing soon. I've been on for quite a while. So thank you for those of you who've been here throughout, sitting with me, going through this. The final, final pillar, and this is one that no one really, more and more it's getting, it's getting emphasis, but it's kind of getting you know, ticking the box emphasis. Yeah, we've done that bit. The final bit is mindset. Mindset is absolutely crucial. And I've put this at the end, not because it's the least important, but because it's... It's the thing which underlies and ties together these other four pillars. So we've got the eliminate stress, fuel, sensible stresses, and rest and recovery. There are four pillars. And then we've got this one, which I wouldn't say is a pillar. This is kind of the base on which these pillars sit, or the roof over the top of these pillars, if you're thinking like some kind of cupola. Because you can know all those first four. You can know everything there is to know. I can sit down with you for a week, and we could go through this in detail. You can know everything there is to know about this. But if you don't do them consistently, it's absolutely useless. And this is where mindset comes in. And it's the ability to take these tools and use them over and over and over and over and over and over again, which builds peak performance. You know, just doing them once won't do you any good. You might feel better for the day, but it won't do you any good long term. You need to be doing them over and over and over and over again. And this is where mindset comes in. It's so, so important because it binds everything together. And what we're talking about literally is, is you know, the most powerful facet of human mindset is identity. If you can switch your identity so that this is just something that you do as part of your identity, you've cracked it. And this sounds really complex and really kind of woo-woo, but it's actually really, really simple. You know, there's a really few simple, and I won't call them tricks, but a few tools that we can use which really, really shift your mindset in a big way, very, very fast, literally you know, a couple of weeks, and suddenly you come out of the other side and your identity has shifted. Um, and when that, that's when, I know when I'm working with a client, when that happens, right, this person's done, we've, we've cracked it. It doesn't matter, if they, even if they only know four, what I would call tactics, you know, they only know literally what I've told you today. That's all they know. You know, that's all they know. And that's all they implement. But they implement those four things over and over and over and over again because they've got the right mindset. That person makes it rather than the person who knows all the tactics but never gets the mindset. Because without that mindset, you won't do any of these consistently. And that's where the problem arises. And if you look at any professional kite surfer or any professional athlete in any in any sport or in any discipline, you know, CEOs of big companies, you know, people like this as well. What what marks them out as different? And you know, there's so many books written, the habits of success, la 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 la. And to be honest, for me, they're all bollocks because habits can change. You can, there's so many ways to skin a cat. You need habits that work for you, not for Richard Branson or for Elon Musk or for 
you know, Aaron Hadlow, you know, they're great for them, fine, but they might not work for you. In fact, they probably won't work for you. But what does link them all together is the mindset where they have identified with, this is just who I am. This is what I do. This is how I live my life. And this is what's so different about those people and about with indeed the people I work with who, who make it is that we we integrate that identity change and, it, and something just shifts deep inside and it makes all the rest of it easy. It makes all the rest of it because I can then give them three or four tactics, really, really sort of basic level ones. Cool. But then when they change those those just four things and they do it consistently, life shifts. Their kite surfing shifts, which is what we're 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 concerned about here. But more than that, you know. Every aspect of their life shifts and upgrades. So mindset really is the the, I don't know, that, the force, you know, if you want. It's kind of the magic that binds it all together and flows through all of them at the same time. So I'm going to be going deep into this. We've got another live masterclass this Thursday. Again, the link is in the show notes below. I would love to see you there. Um, we're going to be going into this in even more detail. And looking at really how you can you know really take the tactics from this to really improve your kite surfing when you are off the water um, i'd love to see you there just literally click the link below jump over there sign up i'll see you on thursday um, thanks for being here much much appreciated again if you enjoyed it if you want to see more of this uh, let me know in the comments got any questions let me know in the comments i do check them all and i will respond to you on there um, make sure you hit like and subscribe that would be awesome as well um, and again click the little red bell to make sure that you get notifications whenever I do these I say I'll be going live a fair bit over the next few weeks so I'd love to see you on these again so thank you guys and I will speak to you all very very soon ciao for now this is the part where I can't find the end stream button <laughs>